three of my favorite features on the Arona. Now, number one excites me probably just a little bit too much, but there's this little hook here and it just tucks away your seatbelt so that when you lower the seat, it's not in the way. So look, it doesn't get caught. Hello and welcome back to another Done Deal Car Review. I'm David O.C. and today we're going to be reviewing the all new Seat Arona. Now it sits in a popular section of the market. It's the small crossover. So effectively this is when a manufacturer grabs a small hot hatch or any hatchback in fact and then they give it stilts, give it more road presence, similarly to the Hyundai Kona which we reviewed very recently. Now this particular Arona sits at about 25 and a half thousand euros. They do start at about 19,000 euros on the road so we'll talk more about financing later on in the video but for now we're going to take a look around it and then we're going to check out the boot space and go from there In terms of boot space and practicality, the Arona is definitely winning. Now it has a 400 liter boot, but this is just a number. You'll definitely fit two suitcases. In fact, if you're good at packing, you'll probably get three in. So there is more space than the Renault Capture, than the Hyundai Kona, and even than the Kia Stonic but it's the features that really separate it. So right now, it's in what I call deep mode. So the, the boot floor is nice and low. If you lift this section up, you can make it nice and flat. And what I mean by that is, if you take off the parcel shelf, you can fold these seats and voila, you have a completely flat boot. In fact, what's more is you can store the parcel shelf under here, away from any problems. On top of that, the last bit is you have a spare wheel. And it's not a little space saver, it's a proper spare wheel. In the back of the car, the door is open wide open, which is great for putting in car seats. Then you've got your Isofix points here, which is very nice. Now it's not only children you can have in this car, as I'm about five foot ten and a half, and I have loads of headroom and loads of knee room. In fact, it also has storage. So right here in front of me, you can see Plenty of storage there for your phones, plenty of space for your cup holders there. You've even got a little, little section there. Now what I will say is there's no center armrest and there's no light on the roof, which is quite strange. Other than that though, it is quite good. Now I did previously mention that it's good for adults. However, let's hope that there's not three adults because it will get a little bit squishy, especially with this kind of hump in the floor. Now, the place you're realistically going to be spending most of your time, the driver's seat. So first, let's talk about what it feels like, the kind of features, and then we'll go into the infotainment system. So it's a, it's a key entry, which I'm a fan of. Now, in general, it is a lovely place to be. The seats are nice and comfortable. There's kind of a mixture of leather and Alcantara. The only thing is missing lumbar support. And in a top of the line car, you would expect it. And that's something I must talk about. This is the F4 version. So this is the top spec. It comes in an S, an SE, an excellence with an X, and then there's this one, the F4, which has all the bells and whistles. Things like the red stitching here and around the steering wheel that make it look that bit nicer, as well as some badging. You've got the flat bottom steering wheel. In terms of storage, you've got room down here for your drinks. Two center uh, drink holders there. A Little bit of storage here, 12 volt socket two USB points, an AUX point, and my personal favorite feature, a little slot for your phone, but not only that, but it actually is wirelessly charging. So you don't have that clutter of having wires around. The infotainment in itself is actually quite impressive. So I have to say this is the upgraded eight inch screen. So the S model, which is the kind of the standard one, only comes with a five inch, one of the extras definitely worth getting. In fact, I'd overall recommend getting the excellence model in this car. So as you can see, there's so many different things here. You've got your radio, your media, your navigation. So yeah, like I said, the navigation, it's brilliant, it's responsive, but there's not much need because it's fully compatible. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and there you can use Google Maps, which is hard to beat. Obviously then you've got in your settings, you can change everything from your screen, your time, your languages. You've got 
you can go into the set and change your volume, all those sort of kind of nice toys that we like to play with when you get a new car. On top of that then, you've got your stop start, which is when you pull up to traffic lights and you wanna, it'll literally turn off and then save some fuel good for the environment and all that. You've got your different driving modes, which is very cool to see, especially when you're in an F4. So generally it'll be a normal, but you can put it into sport. You can actually customize it in individual, or if you're looking to really save on the fuel efficiency, you can go into eco mode. You've got parking assist, which effectively will help you find a car parking spot and help you park, which is very cool. And then last but not least, you've got your, uh, your parking sensors. And if you pop it into reverse, you actually have a rear view mirror, a rear view camera, apologies, which is very good and again, very impressive. To drive, it is nice and fun, it's responsive. And in fact, I was kind of worried as the Ibiza is quite a nice car to drive, that it might take away from that being a lifted version, but it really hasn't. Now, this particular one is the F4 1.5, 150 brake horsepower petrol version, but it comes in a complete array, ranging from the one liter all the way up to the 1.6 liter diesel, which you can get in 95 brake horsepower or 115, which if you're looking for economical driving, that's your go-to. Now this one, as I said, it's 150 brake horsepower and it is surprisingly responsive. What's more is it's actually reasonably fuel efficient. They're claiming about 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is pretty impressive. In today's rates, I think we pay about 1 euro 38 per, per liter, which if you multiply that out by 5.8, works out about eight euros to take you 100 kilometers, which is pretty reasonable. And then if you're looking to get more fuel efficiency, then like we said, you can get the 1.6 diesel, it'll cost you about five euro to go 100 kilometers. So all in all, to drive, it's nice. As I said, it's a nice place to sit. My only complaint is actually that it doesn't have lumbar support. I kind of wish it had that. Now in true done deal fashion, I have to say three of my least favorite and three of my favorite things about every car. Now, the first one on the Arona is these two exhausts. Now, don't get me wrong, there are actually twin tip exhausts on this car, but these are entirely fake. And right under here, there is a twin tip exhaust coming out. Now it's not mad, mad problem, but it's, I don't know, every, everyone has this kind of pet peeve against fake exhausts. Number two is the fact that the 1.5 liter, the petrol engine, the one that you probably do want, is not available in a DSG gearbox. So the one liter petrol and the 1.6 diesel are, but this one's not. And I think, actually, if I'm to put some facts behind it, the most recent done deal motor industry report will tell you that 30% of new car sales this year were automatic and that's a huge shift and that's the way that the market's kind of going. So to make a fun kind of hot hatch crossover that doesn't have a DSG gearbox, it's a bit of a shame. Number three is the fact that in the models that aren't the F4 version, there isn't the red stitching here or around the steering wheel or on the gear stick or even the handbrake. And I just think that's a little bit of a shame because without it, it's quite dull inside. Now, obviously in this sector of the market, a lot of the cars are quite dull inside, but I just think that the red stitching does so much and probably would be a nice feature on the rest of the range. Three of my favorite features on the Arona. Now, number one excites me probably just a little bit too much, but there's this little hook here and it just tucks away your seatbelt so that when you lower the seat, it's not in the way, so look doesn't get caught. Number two is the overall design. Now, generally, I don't think that crossovers look that good, and maybe that's potentially not the nicest thing to say, but they just don't suit me. But I think overall, when you, when you take into consideration the front grille, the badging around it with the F4, the roof rails, the blacked out roof, I just think overall, it's probably the best looking compact crossover there is on the market. Okay, so number three, is that this car is actually very fun. I said it before that it's a nice car to drive, but honestly, it really, really captures the feeling of a hot hatch and it handles fantastically. And after driving it for a little while now, I really am a fan of it. So 10 out of 10 for making a small crossover feel like a very fun hot hatch. 
In summary, I think the Seat Arona is actually a fantastic car. Whether you're young and you're looking for something that's cheap to insure, or you're a little bit older and you want something with, with a little bit of space for the family, it's going to bring you a little bit of happiness and a lot of practicality along the way. Now, the one thing I always like to talk about is finance, as I think it's very important to give people that insight, as a lot of people are buying cars on finance these days. So. The one we often touch on is PCP, and this is so popular. But what's interesting about this is apparently a lot of people are trading in their old cars as a scrappage scheme. So see it offer up to 2,000 euros scrappage. And then on top of that, if you add, let's say three and a half, 4,000, so you're just shy of the 6,000 euro mark, then you're gonna be able to get one of these at this spec for about 46 euro a week, which 46 euro a week is literally like, like it's seriously impressive, I'm blown away. So it's very affordable, you'll be paying that for about 36 months. You can't do more than 20,000 kilometers a year, but if you're the type of person who's buying a 1.5 liter petrol Seat Arona, you probably won't be doing more than 20,000 kilometers a year. All in all, I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have any, any insight into it, if you've ever owned one, if you've test drove one, please comment below, let us know your feedback. I wanna say thank you so much for watching, for all the engagement in the recent videos. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much and we hope this video helped you get into your next car.